Hi, I'm Jared with Fun Science Demos. This is your weekly forecast. The week's going to start off with record highs for the month of October. But by the end of the week, a series of short but violent thunderstorms are going to drive out that humidity. And by the weekend, it's looking beautiful and clear. Perfect weather for pumpkin picking. Weather forecasting doesn't have to be left to the professionals. Today we're highlighting this. It's a super cool weather station from Ambient Weather and it allows kids and classrooms to embrace that role of meteorologist and gather their own real-time local data and generate forecasts with that information. Our friends at Ambient Weather sent us this awesome tool and we wanted to showcase it on Fun Science Demos. This right here is the WS2801A weather station and it's one of the simplest easy to use and most affordable weather stations out there. And today we're going to show you how we would use this in the classroom. Once you turn this thing on, you see how cool it is. It has this beautiful display that displays all of the important weather data. This is the sensor that you need to find a spot for outside so this can start gathering your weather data. Today we're going to be looking at air pressure right here. And the cool thing about this forecast station is that you have a really cool lighted and colored picture that gives it those air pressure numbers context. It shows you what the weather's like based on these numbers. If your students watch those air pressure numbers carefully, they'll begin to notice a pattern. The lower the air pressure numbers, the more lousy the weather is. In fact, low air pressure means that the atmosphere is unstable and bad weather like rain or storms are coming in. Now it's difficult to talk about air pressure because air is invisible. So we're going to show you some really cool activities you can do in your classroom with your students to help them better understand air pressure. Now to help my students better understand air pressure, we're going to use something that they can see. Water in this little scenario. I have a little pipe cleaner guy that's going to be my diver. We're going to turn him upside down and he's going to dive deep into our little pool. So let's walk through the scenario. As my diver dives deeper, he'll probably feel more pressure pushing against him. Why? Why is that? Well, this water has weight, and the further down he goes, the more water there is above him, the more water there is pushing against him. He can feel that pressure specifically in his ears. And the same is true of our atmosphere, except we're not surrounded by water, we're surrounded by air. We are surrounded by miles of air in our atmosphere, and all of that air has weight. Through science, we've actually discovered that there's about 14.7 pounds of air pressure pushing against us in all directions from all the weight of that air. And we can show you that air has weight with two balloons and a digital scale. So I have my digital scale ready to go. This magnet is going to help me attach the balloon to the scale. You can see that I teared it out so that it's now reading zero grams. Let's see what happens when I put an empty balloon on the digital scale. Just going to kind of wrap the balloon around the magnet. There's a little bit of air trapped inside, but you can see that it's reading 2.8 grams. Now I'm going to put some air in this balloon and put it back on the scale and see if the air inside the balloon actually has weight. Here we go. So I have two identical balloons from the same pack, same size. One without any air weighed 2.8 grams. Let's put some air in this balloon and see how much it weighs. So we have our balloon on our scale and it's not touching the ground anywhere. Remember the empty balloon weighed 2.8 grams. Let's see how heavy this balloon is filled with air. What does the scale say? The scale is reading six grams. So think about that. We were able to put three grams of air into this balloon. We doubled the weight of this empty balloon. Air has weight and that weight leads to air pressure. Now to really see the power of air pressure, we're going to need a glass spaghetti jar, marinara sauce, and some water balloons. I picked red because I wanted it to look like a meatball to go in my marinara sauce. Now if we're looking at air pressure and its impact on weather, it's important to realize that scientists have discovered that air likes to move from high pressure to low pressure. This balloon is surrounded by air. There's air pressure pushing down on this balloon. But what's trapped inside my jar? Air. Air is trapped inside my jar and that air takes up space and it has pressure of its own. If I could lower the air pressure in this bottle, that means the air pressure in this room would be greater and it would push that balloon into the bottle. So how am I going to lower the air pressure in the jar? 
Well, I'm going to heat it up. See, air does something cool when you heat it up. Air expands. It becomes lighter. It spreads out. So if I heat the air in the jar, it'll expand. It'll rush out of the jar, lowering the pressure. And then when I plop the balloon on top, that balloon is going to want to go from high pressure to low pressure. Now you're going to need an adult to help you do this because it's going to involve some fire. The paper is lit, dropped in, the air is heating up, balloon goes on top, you can see it bounce, and it goes into the jar. Now if you watch carefully, you actually saw the water balloon bounce on the top of the jar. Why was it doing that? Well, the hot air was rushing past that balloon out of the jar, and I had a low pressure system in the jar, the high pressure system out here in the room pushed that balloon into the jar. Science at work. So how am I going to get the balloon out? If I try to pull this balloon out of the jar, I don't think it's going to work. I need some air pressure back in the jar to help me push that balloon out. So how do I add air pressure to the jar? I'm going to use a straw and add some of my own air pressure. So now I'm going to blow into the straw and see if I can add some extra air pressure to help me get that balloon out. Here we go. It pops right out. Air pressure at work. We'd like to thank our friends at Ambient Weather for sending us this awesome little weather station. You can pick one up for yourself or your classroom for just about $50. Science is so cool and it's working in the world around us even when we can't see it. Thanks for watching. Oh, I wonder what would happen if I tried that balloon in a bottle with a bigger balloon and a bigger bottle. Let's try.